Welcome along and welcome back to a fairly early morning here on Stone Valley. Uh, today, we're back up on our farm to start off with. We've got some work to do with our uh, cows. Uh, they all need feeding. Uh, we've got some milk to deliver as well. So uh, we're going to be getting all of that sorted. Um, and then we've got a couple of contracts that have come up. We've already accepted them. Uh, we've got to go down to the contract office to do them. Now, I've only driven out here because we're going to be taking this off the back of this and loading up in a minute with the with our uh, milk trailer. Uh, but first, we need to actually feed the cows. So we're going to be using both our tractors for this. And we still have a fair amount of fuel in the uh, John Deere, which is good news. Um, I have had a little bit of a problem with the contract since last time. So the two contracts that we completed and were unable to collect on um, actually still weren't able to collect on. And when I loaded up this save, they uh, they disappeared. Um, so we've got the money for them. We've uh, spoken to the contract office and got that sorted and cleared up. Uh, but it was all a little bit weird. And uh, and they had to, to sort of go round the houses for it. Uh, whereas uh, trying to get contracts, trying to get these two contracts that we picked up today. Initially, uh, they had problems as well. We've now sorted that problem and uh, managed to clear it out. Unfortunately, in the process, we lost a great deal on a really classic tractor. There was a, an international, but that has since disappeared. Um, and instead, in the shop, uh, we've got an offer on a Massey Ferguson 7720 and a Fent 300. Um, neither of which quite fit our farm. We need something bigger than the Massey. And um, we already have a, our two tractors that we have uh, match what we've got there. Um, we might need a tether, looking at the tether that's there. So uh, we might go and try and grab that because we are going to be doing some grass work and we are going to be doing hay specifically, actually. So, uh, yeah, I think I might just call the shop up and get that purchased before that disappears because uh, that actually is going to be really, really useful for our grass work. Uh, so we'll we'll get that sorted uh, we're going to need to bring the feed trailer over here. But I will just... Oh, no, it's not over here. We changed everything around, didn't we? Uh, the oats on field five, which we want to purchase, uh, those have gone. Uh, so that contract is done and dusted. All of our bales are in this shed over here. So, yep, we're going to get these done here. So it should be, we should be all right for today. We've got, we got two uh, silage bales, two hay bales, and a single straw bale, and then top up with the uh, mineral feed. That should be enough. And then that will top up all of our feed for our cows. So let's get this actually into the right position. And how are we looking for some silage? Oh, we've got a fair amount of silage in there. That's good. Uh, I am going to have to reinstate all of the fencing around this farm at some point. We've still got cows sort of wandering around in areas that should be fenced off. So uh, that needs doing. Right, let's turn the mixer on. Actually, let's go and empty this first. Looking at this, we've still got 4,623 litres in here. And that is more than enough uh, to get us started. Yeah, I think there's supposed to be fencing all around this road on the outside and then the main farmyard isn't really meant to be covered so right let's bring this in here and then tip it there we go out and feed them this and uh, and then we can go and load up again now as i said earlier we are trying to get hold of field five it's Divided into three fields rather nicely. Uh, it will give us a good opportunity to uh, start with our own stuff. Uh, we're going on the strange thing here of not actually getting a combine harvester on this map. I'm not looking to do uh, harvester uh, combines 
and uh, and that kind of stuff on here we are planning to eventually get a forage harvester i think we'll end up releasing it so on a on a lease to buy setup with it uh because there's not really any other way i'm going to be able to afford it initially uh, and then we'll be able to cover that lease over time by continuing to do contract work uh contract work very much is what we have to do on here to survive which is why it worries me slightly if we're having problems with contracts uh the stuff on our farm really really needs it uh in order to survive until we get a decent amount of land so uh it's gonna be quite a tough one okay let's pl put this in there come on back it off and drop it in there we go right how full is that uh we are pretty much there that is loading that in yep and that then gives us a good mix and we just need to put our thing of mineral feed in so we are going to need we still need a few things uh we're gonna need some more uh, mineral feed we're gonna need well we're gonna need some more bales in general i was hoping that we were going to be able to cut a field at this point and in fact have mowers to cut it uh yeah the only thing we've got is the tether and you know what i am going to pick this tether up so uh we just check we've got our we've got everything else except that here at the moment uh let's see we've released those two we do not have a tether on the farm. Uh, the other thing we're trying to keep an eye out for the, the moment is a mower. Yes, I want to purchase that. Thank you. And we'll go and pick that up later. Right. Let's get our pallet of mineral feed, uh, which is just sort of the last uh, thousand liters. I really love how our feeder works on here. Uh, the fact that it... it is a really decent feeder for what we're doing is great i do want to eventually replace with is there a vermeer one i can't remember if we've got a vermeer animal feeder on here let's have a look animals uh no it's a there's a straw blower which i want to get but there's no uh, actual animal feeder so yeah that's fine um but yeah i want to try and get from the the vermeer dlc the uh straw blower or straw depositor uh i would also like to get the um mower if we can the mower for that where are you there we are uh so the vermeer mower that one is a really nice mower Forty-nine thousand. we could actually get it now it will run on 110 horsepower yeah that is exactly what we want on the farm it would be nice if one turns up but we are getting very close to needing to cut our grass field let's just pop over here if we've got the tether it might be worth hiring that vermeer one yeah that actually is very much ready to harvest uh width on it should be good enough to go around this tree i think uh the tree that might be an issue is that one but i think we'll be okay it's not great for small spaces, but um, it, it should be a good mower for us to have, to be honest. We're fully loaded up on the mineral feed then. Let's back that out. And we will just put this in the corn here. So yeah, mower and uh, straw blower are the two things I'd like to buy. Uh, it's, it's all saving up for field five though at the moment. If I can get field five, that is going to give us a huge jump start, especially going into next year. So I'm keeping an eye on that and trying to move that forward. I don't think we'll be doing very much over winter on this map, though. And uh, as we start to shift into it, I think we'll uh, move forward to the new year to try and move things forward. We might have a quick stop off halfway through to just make sure we have enough feed uh but at the moment yeah we seem to be doing okay and the cows are going to take all of this let's see where that leaves us nicely half full 
uh, we are going to be okay for a little while then. Let's put this away and then I'm going to go and switch the bed on our truck to our milk tanker and we'll go and get a little bit of money in for that. And actually, that's probably going to pay for what we've just spent on the tether. So two tractors put away like so. What was in the corner here? Oh, this is some seeds. Yeah, we've got a fair amount of seeds. This is left over from doing the grass work. Uh, the plan, as I was saying earlier, is that we will be doing... Oh, no. Uh, drop that off. Thank you. Uh, we'll be doing uh, forage harvesting on it. So we will need a planter. We won't need a particularly huge one. Uh, one that can run with our two tractors will be fine. Uh, as the farm gets bigger, we will probably need a bigger one or a bigger tractor and a bigger planter. But uh, certainly, Field 5, I think we've got enough equipment kicking around already. And that on and refill it. This should take about 6,000 litres. There we go. And best price for milk right now is going to be... There we go. Valley Sale. Tag that. And let's have a look at where that is on our map. Where have we got this flashing? Down there. In fact, that's perfect. We'll head down there and uh, that will allow us to almost immediately pick up with the contract. And our sell point is just over here on the right. So let's pull in. Where are we? Somewhere. Oh, there it is. Round the back of here. So down this road here. Um, we should make a decent amount. I think it's at 1,381 was the price. Uh, let's just double check that before we sell. So price is 1,300. Sorry, 1,318 was the price. It has dropped since. So yeah, we want to get this sold, make our money, and then go and make a whole load more. Now, field five, the price is currently 409,000. I'm really, really hoping that that comes up at some point as a, uh, a, a, a in an auction. That would be perfect for us uh, because, yeah, nearly half a million pounds is, uh, well, we're not even halfway there to that at the moment. However, this is going to help rectify this park our truck here because this is our case 9250 axle flow combine uh with a header a teraflex header uh we've got a jcb 8330 we've just had one of those in fact i think as well and we've got the straumann trailer here and what i'm going to do is that 8330 is big enough to put this on the front so we'll go and drop that off at the farm on the way so into the combine and we'll probably actually do the whole thing in convoy again and uh, and get that all up there and then we can drop that off at the farm and get the combine working there we go like that get the tractor sorted out as well I think this is, yeah, this is bigger than the last JCBs we were using. Using a lot of JCBs on here at the moment. Also, the interesting thing to notice, note about this tractor is this does not have all-wheel steering. Uh, it only has the uh, front wheel, whereas the 4220 has uh, steering for all four wheels. So this is ever so slightly less maneuverable. Now, do both our fields need delivering to the same place? I'm kind of hoping not. Let's see. Uh, two contracts. You are going to South Valley Stores. Oh, they are both going to South Valley Stores. We will find out very quickly which one uh, is doing first. I reckon it's probably Field 31 because that's the field where we grabbed first to make sure we were grabbing all the equipment. And what we want to do is get this onto the road into position. And uh, actually, no, we should be all right, I think. Let's 
bring this here we can then pull this forwards out there like that line it up and what are you following you are following that are you yep and then this one here need to make sure this follows at a good distance right and we want to drop it back to probably about 45 right let's see if our convoy works and we can get it up to the field well i finally got it sorted and uh we are nicely in convoy heading up to field one so as we are almost there um i'm gonna need to pull over onto the side here because we want to go and take this truck back down to the farm so we'll leave this here i'm going to jump into this take our hide worker off here and just pull this up to uh well probably actually down to the bottom and then what i want to do is get the hired worker on this one now doing what it was doing initially and uh we're gonna follow the uh truck there we go right so did combine there for a moment and uh we're gonna go and drop off the tether dropping off the trailer i just before i go move forward let's stop that tractor moving and uh we can drop off the tether there we go so stop that moving and go and drop the tether off that's killed two birds with one stone been absolutely fantastic that i'm very very pleased that um i've managed to do that i was worried i was going to need to get uh catch those uh that i was going to, need to take a uh, second trip down there with the tractor and do that but bringing that back on the front of this has saved us a job and now all i need to do is put my truck bed back on and we are all sorted so i'll see you down the field in a minute when we go and get the header on so let's attach the header for our combine now we do have gps on this which is great news and uh oh i need to actually connect it there we go uh, we want to connect up that and the hoses nice thing on these is the hoses connect up automatically uh, our combine is all already folded out so all we need to do is fold up the header there we go and start up the combine and Oh, we need to start the combine threshing as well. There we go. And in we go. And this should handle this crop fairly well, I think. I'll be disappointed if one mile an hour is all we're going to go at. This should be easily able to handle this. So we've got a few settings here. So if I turn the daytime limit off, that's what's causing it wow i love combine experience but it can be a real pain sometimes yeah uh i think we're gonna run without the limits on because it's nine o'clock that's you know 10 in the morning that shouldn't be an issue nearly halfway around the field and we are 76 percent full so we're definitely not going to make it to the end of the field uh, for this. But I am going to do a slightly different way of harvesting this. Uh, it was a realistic way I saw of harvesting from... Well, it was back from uh, the days of FSUK. There were some good articles on there originally. I think it was FSUK, uh, which had... Um, ways of realistically harvesting and farming in general and the way it did the field and did the headlands was very different to how i was used to basically uh you go around three sides of the field and you leave 
the fourth side uh and of course you make sure that you do the two sides you need to do in order to uh get the uh to open up the headlands um but yeah you the the final headland the final side you don't uh you don't necessarily go and harvest and it's a fairly neat way to harvest because uh you get far enough around the field to uh to empty the first time and uh and then coming back it, it means you just work your way uh back across the field i, I think it really worked and i want to give it a try today we are 93 94 percent full though i don't think we're gonna make it the whole way around this field before we have to empty or even the whole way down this side before we have to empty as nice as that would be to then empty with the auger in the right place i think what we're gonna have to do is just back off yeah in fact that is gonna hit fourteen thousand four hundred. we'll turn off the header we'll get our auger out and uh yeah we need to go and get our tractor and trailer we'll pull this underneath our auger get it emptied out and i think this trailer should hold a very very large amount of uh of grains um, we do want to just line it out a bit it looks like this works as a well no this works as a forage trailer as well so this isn't just a uh, standard trailer Having something like this on the farm might be quite useful to us so long as our tractors will pull it. And that's the only reason, I think, actually, that having a larger tractor might be useful to us if we need to pull a larger trailer. I don't know how many horsepower this uh, fast track has, but uh, it could be a reasonably large amount. How full is that trailer? Have a look uh 27 percent. so yeah we're gonna fit nearly four trailers worth or four full combines worth in here uh, and this is why i'm not worrying too much about doing oh we need to start this thrashing uh, i'm not worrying too much about needing to uh or about doing the carting today uh we are going to be emptying this combine on a regular basis and uh as a result uh, we, well, we're not going to actually emptying it that often. I mean, we've got nearly three quarters of the way around this field. And uh, and therefore, we're not also going to be emptying the trailer very often. And, uh, and it'll be fine from that point of view. We won't need to worry too much about it. So as I mentioned, I'm only going to do three parts of the headland. Uh, we're going to turn around in this corner and head back the other way. So let's bring that there. Oh yeah, let's not drive into the water. So we want to square off this corner. And then... Oh, I'm quite pleased with that. That's actually not bad at all. Fantastic. Certainly uh, better than our, uh, our previous row has gone looking at that edge. Lots of interesting theories as to why we had so many problems with those potato contracts uh, i think these two fields are going to give us a good indication as to whether it's the waterways if we have a large excess on both these fields neither of which have any waterways or any breaks in them at all uh, that is certainly going to lead to a lot of credence for the amount of uh, effect those waterways have um on the other hand uh it th that last field was really weird as to why it uh, didn't produce as much potatoes as we suspected um a couple of theories i wanted to address uh one was the idea that because we were harvesting beyond when that crop can normally harvest that might cause an issue um i've done a few contracts like that where we uh finished the contract or or at least um you know work the contract after uh, it has the the actual crop has gone out of season uh, has never caused that kind of issue before and i'd expect it to basically stop me doing the whole contract rather than uh, just giving me a shortfall so uh yeah that's not been an issue before 
and uh, a few times i've seen people say uh multiple contracts making multiple contracts could be the issue or, or better contracts the better contract mod that we're using could be the issue uh, again not having this kind of issue with the better contracts mod on anywhere else uh people have said that they're getting it on here without precision farming so it uh, looks like we can rule precision farming out as well um yeah there's just some very very odd things going on with the contracts in general and as i said i had a, a, a bit of an issue today starting up with those two contracts that we couldn't get last time uh just disappeared when uh, i reloaded the save game so yeah not 100 percent sure uh, what is causing our contracts issues on here uh, it may be that we eventually have to look at changing maps if it continues though um, because as i said contracts are a big part of start start from scratch especially on a map like this where we just don't have a hope of affording any of the fields around our farm at the moment now it's a little bit fiddly down this bottom corner because i cut into the field not at the corner but uh, slightly down so i'm gonna cut in and go round and try and follow the original cutting i did and then we'll come back and clean up the extra bit of headland we need to do of that yeah that wasn't too bad and then yeah it's just a case of clearing up we then need to set our gps course which if we do that while we're cutting in on this bit here should allow us to set things up rather nicely so here we are at 270 degrees i think this side of the field uh, it's roughly going uh east west and we want to make sure we cut in far enough to do this right so uh being at the edge of the field here i'm just going to set up gps so we'll turn it on uh we'll bring the menu up because the way i want to do it is uh a plus heading so if we go back and we set that and our heading we are looking at 270 and then we'll put the lines on there we go and we want to auto width and move the lines over and that then puts us in the best position for the rest of the field so we'll turn those off and now we just need to activate it when we go and this is line zero so we know that we want to cut in at line four in order to properly be in the right place which is uh is quite nice in fact it'll be line minus yeah minus one minus two it's actually probably minus three i want to cut in at so uh yeah this point here and in on that straighten up and that means we should be doing a six row uh cut in a six row land and uh yeah be in a very good position to clear a wide stretch of this field out without too much hassle coming up to my fourth and final load of this combine for this trailer let's get our auger out and what keep an eye on that there we go 94 98 and done so this is easily going to fill this trailer we'll have some left in the combine as well um but filling this up will give us a good idea of exactly how much space we have uh, or how many loads we're gonna have to deliver there we go 52,000 liters uh this trailer holds let's take a quick look uh yeah south valley stores so that's on the map is not that one that's Greenwich valley south valley stores is that one so uh tag that so tip those in there 28 percent percent transporters um for field one so it is completing field one which is great news uh but only 28 percent transporters and uh we're only up to 30 percent done 
but it actually requires well it must have required 180,000 liters so that's that's more than i was thinking it needed uh which explains the 28 percent uh also explains why we're only 30 percent of the way through however it does give me a little bit of cause for concern because uh you might notice that our combine has gone through probably about a third of its fuel so uh we could run out of fuel and uh we could run out of uh def as well uh, before we finish this field uh, the other thing i've noted and uh and i think i'm probably gonna have to do uh is hold on to the excess soybeans the price for soybeans at the moment is really quite low. We look at this, we can over double the price of these if we hold on to it till June next year. So uh, that shed that I can't get rid of uh, and I can't remove, I think we're going to have to store some soybeans in there and sell them when they're worth more to us. As I work my way across this field, I'm trying to be a little bit more efficient in how we're doing it so as my combine has got to 80 percent full i've set it to be a hired worker and then what we can do is just jump in the tractor and uh come up beside and empty as we're going from up here i can get a better view of how much is left in the grain tank so that when it actually empties we'll be able to just drop off which will be there and as we're getting near the end of the row, all I do is jump back into here and get ready to start this up again. In fact, what we'll do is we'll wait to end the hired worker at the end of the row. So there is perfect. Then we can turn all of the combine back on and get back onto the next row without much hassle. I want to see if I can get field one done today. It's a uh, a field that uh, is huge. It'll bring us in a massive amount of money. Uh, it should take us over 200,000 and uh, will give us a good stance to go from. As I said, if field five comes up for auction, I want to be able to, to be able to bid on it. It should be about half the price i think that it normally goes for and uh snapping it up would be great we are just coming up to 75 percent of the way through this contract uh but the sun is getting fairly low in the sky it's uh seven minutes past six in the evening and i think this will probably be our last load for today uh we can pick this up next time we've got uh this field to finish off and the uh and field 31 which is just around the corner both of these we're looking at a decent excess amount of cropping and in fact what i think i'm going to do is rather than just continue delivering crop from this field after we've completed this contract i think we'll go dump the excess from this field into our barn and then we'll uh go and harvest it field 31 and only complete the contract on field 31 with the uh grain with the soybeans that are on it uh, i'm gonna put out the auger i'm gonna hire a worker and this is 56 percent full so i don't think we're gonna get a full trailer off here but we don't need two more full trailers to finish this uh we need 50 uh sorry 676 thousand liters of soybeans to finish the contract on this field and the amount we've got off this row is 46,000. I'm expecting the hired worker to finish off there. There we go. So that's that combine done for the night. Uh, we are 89% full. So by no means a small amount in here. Uh, that will get us a good way towards completing this contract. But as the sun sets here on Stone Valley... 
all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please leave a like drop us a comment and give it a share special thanks to all my patrons and channel members your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow for more from virtual farmer check out the links below follow on twitch to watch live and for more videos subscribe and ring that bell i will see you next time goodbye